I have a question for Claudio. Thank you. So, my question is to take advantage of the black hole at the center of our galaxy. Do we, can we be where we are at eight kiloparsecs away from it or whatever it is, or do we need to be much closer? Much closer, <laughs> unfortunately. That's the difficulty with using actually all black holes as gravitational waves. I'm Stan Metcher from the University of Western Ontario. Uh, so taking your idea of the galactic internet, if there have been advanced civilizations run in the nearby stars, they presumably could have thought about establishing one. So if you uh, look at, say, focal one point for the sun, uh, that's pointed away from Alpha Centauri, there could be an alien spacecraft there, in fact, beaming toward Alpha Centauri. And in fact, there could be a, an array of alien spacecraft pointed in the directions opposite to the nearest stars. So this actually makes a predictable uh, a testable prediction. We can actually look for those alien spacecraft that should be beaming at us yes. into the inner solar system. That is precisely my idea too. Actually, let, let me put it in a different language, but the idea is the same. If we want to exploit this physical property to keep in touch with civilization, quotes, in all directions, we should build something like a Dyson sphere at 550 U. Or bigger. Yeah. Um, some questions about perhaps the mission, not SETI. Phil. Uh, just in general, in the um, solar lens concepts, as you move relative to the uh, chief ray, so it's uh, moving perpendicular, in a real mission, things are not going to be static. Looking at the planet or spacecraft or anything, just in general for all of you, if you could kind of think this through for us, you know, in terms of how a realistic mission would go, uh, looking at something far away that's moving, and also the spacecraft is moving, and of course, sun is moving, etc. Yes, um, thank you for the question. The way we look at this in the following, so uh, we will have probably uh, three spacecraft uh, in the plane of Einstein Ring around the sun. So this three spacecraft will, um, will be used for pointing, providing pointing information uh, to the uh, spacecraft that is actually uh, at, the, uh, at, the, at the gravity lens. So this three spacecraft will use information about the uh, position of the planet and will update, uh, will provide enough information for point ahead uh, for the uh, telescope. So given that information, what is left is to move um, spacecraft and image plane. And because um, the three uh, velocities involved, first of all, there is a proper motion between, uh, between the sun and the parent star. Then there is an orbital motion of the uh, star around, uh, or planet around its star. And then there is also rotation. So um, because um, we, look at, uh, we looked at this and essentially, uh, we will uh, never see their, um, I mean, we don't like that, uh, we, we wouldn't like that the planet will be transiting. So it will be nice, it will be a sort of face on. So therefore we don't have to look at its parent star. And if we are, if we are lucky in this case, if our favorable uh, planet will, will be face on. So what is left is that part of the orbit, uh, we will have enough information to actually integrate the signal, not, not through the whole year, because it will, be, um, um, it will be difficult to do this the whole year, but majority of the time, I think it will be sufficient for within a month, uh, within its, uh, the month uh, of, of that planet. So we should be able to get uh, quite a few pictures uh, assembled uh, through the, um, in the image plane. So what is left is now we take care of the uh, orbital motion. This information will be provided by ground-based or space-based observatories in the future because uh, we will know a lot about this uh, planet ahead of time. We'll use spectroscopy, radio velocity, astrometry to determine the orbit, rotation rate, uh, this, uh, some uh, biosignatures, so the uh, atmosphere. So this information will be provided. So what, it will, what is left is to take the image and spectroscopy because this uh, gravitational lens is extremely good for spectroscopy as well. And we, ha we have discussion today in the morning that spectroscopy will be wonderful. Exactly this is the case. So what is left is essentially the rotation of that planet. And uh, the, the, the proper rotation um, uh, will be taken care of by looking at the non-uniformity of the Einstein ring formed by that, by, by that planet. Because uh, the phases, we will not see the uh, planet directly 
uh, the full disk because it reflects light, right? So there will be phases of that planet. And that information will be provided to us by looking at the non-uniformity of uh, radiation deposited on, on in sectors of the Einstein ring. That will be very helpful as we uh, sample that uh, Einstein ring, we will know exactly uh, how this uh, planet, uh, in, in what phase it's going on. This information will be helpful to point and to study the, uh, uh, the information. So we have thought about this, but it's a, it's a strongly design. I think we are confident, but still, it, a lot of work needs to be done. Um, I was told by uh, Jamie that we are at our time limit, and we, there will be plenty of time for discussion during the panel discussion. So let's thank the three speakers again.